chili beans on the griddle. What? The full recipe will be in the description, but kind of a quick overview of what we'll put in this. we got two cans of beef broth, some petite diced tomatoes, dark red kidney beans, cannellini beans, tomato paste, tomato sauce, various spices, ground beef, 85-15, some chopped pepper and onion. So I got the still made griddle preheated to 450 degrees Fahrenheit, and I'm just going to plop this old chub of ground beef down on here. Now for the fun part, take your two spatulas, just kind of chop it up, we're just going to brown it. Uh, it's going to go on here for a little while. We'll later throw in some onions and peppers, so I'm just going to chop it. Keep working it until you get the level of doneness you want. I like a little bit of that nice crust on it. That's more flavor. So I'm going to go ahead and put down my onion and my sweet pepper. This right here is about one large onion I chopped up. And you may be able to tell that the peppers are red, yellow, and orange. I went with one of them little plastic bags of peppers, you know, that you can find in your produce section at most grocery stores couple dollars not too bad i like the flavor and it gives a nice little coloration we got going on here i'm gonna press them out into a thin layer and i'm gonna start letting them kind of brown up themselves the meat is still doing its thing don't rush a good thing so i'm gonna be patient let the onions and peppers and beef do their thing but i'm gonna go ahead and put a pot back here in the back and i'm gonna pour in one of the cans of beef broth that we saw earlier nothing fancy you can see right here it's the same can from earlier no tricks here and it'll start slowly heating up. Then I'm gonna come in with about a tablespoon or two of tomato paste. I'm not really giving an exact measurement here. I'm just kind of winging it because I'm just wanting some flavor to my liquid. The reason I'm doing this is as I reduce my chili down on the griddle, I can pour a little liquid in. This right here is half of a can of tomato sauce from earlier. Just half, we're gonna save the other half for later. I'll take my whisk and I'm gonna whisk this together and I'll probably put in a little chili powder, something like that. Depends on where you're at on the spice level, how flavorful you want it. But it doesn't have to be perfect. It's really just to kind of keep the chili hydrated. As I turn these onions here, I'm in no rush to get these going. I want them kind of slowly brown. My beef over here, you know, it's not getting that char on it yet. I don't really want that at this point. Just kind of letting it cook down, reduce a little bit. Keep chopping it the level of doneness you want. It's your chili. Do it your way. Knock, knock. Who's there? Butter. You butter believe it. Butter has joined the party, and butter is always on my invitation list. If you're still watching, I'm just going to put this on here to give a little bit more flavor and kind of help with that golden it up process. About a tablespoon of my meat and a tablespoon of my peppers and onions. Nothing too crazy. And I'm going to put on a little Worcestershire sauce. Just kind of, I like Worcestershire sauce. And I splash it on there until it makes me happy. If you don't like Worcestershire sauce, that'd probably be an ingredient to omit. I just kind of toss it around. See that color starting to come in pretty nicely. And that right there, remember, is some good flavor we're adding to this chili. If you see any bigger pieces that you don't really want in your chili that big, chop them up with your spatulas. And I'm trying to keep it at a pretty consistent thin layer. That way they get done how I want them consistently. I'm just going to kind of keep chopping on the meat, turning it, just repeat that process over and over until once again, like I said earlier, the color of it is where I feel like it's going to give a nice flavor to this chili. We aren't quite there yet, but we're getting close. You can see that golden color starting to form. Let's keep at it. So a couple minutes have passed. I like where the colors went, so I'm going to push them over here to my ground beef. I don't think there's any issue now of putting them in together one, let them start absorbing one another's flavors, and they'll just kind of keep browning as we do the rest of our chili process. Like I said, this is kind of eyeball it procedure, and I'm going to kind of eyeball it. Got them eyeballs ready? I do. My eyeballs say it's time for the spices. So this right here, like I said, the exact amounts will be in the description of this video. There's also some tomato paste in there, but I'm going to go ahead and pour all this in here and just kind of make sure I'm scraping it all out because I want all that flavor in my chili. And then I'm actually going to take my spatulas and work it in together. And this right here is a step you got to be careful on because I want to get it nice and mixed together and let them flavors really start to come out. Kind of spread my tomato paste there so it's not just one big ball in there and it kind of becomes one as it heats up with the rest of the spices. Be careful here so you don't burn it. But I'm just doing this first to kind of mix it a little bit 
before we put any more liquid in it. So you can kind of see, just chop it in, work it down. If you see some pieces that are too big, take care of them. And I'm making a little well here, as you can see in the center. And that's where I'm gonna pour my sauce so it don't run out everywhere. It's a little trick, if you do some stuff like this enough, you'll pick it up pretty quick. You see it bubbling around real nice. We're still nice and hot. And I'm just gonna take my spatulas and mix, mix, mix. This part right here, probably be a little cautious. It can be super fun, but really messy. So just kind of have a little fun with it, but be responsible. Chili dam time. That's right, we've come to the time again where we'll make a little well there in the center. And this time I'm gonna be putting the other can of beef broth. I'm gonna slowly add it in a little bit of different increments. Working in there, we're kind of trying to create a little bit of a, I don't know, griddle simmer here type deal. Make sure you're turning it pretty often so you don't burn it. And this right here, just kind of work it in there and it'll thicken up as it cooks out. When you get to that point and you feel like it needs a little bit more, you want to repeat that process again, make you a little opening in the center, kind of like such. And then I'm going to go over here with my beef broth again and just kind of keep repeating that process. So like I said, this can be really messy, so just kind of be a little careful here. You don't want to go off the front of the griddle or anything like that. I'm just slinging it like a madman, as you can see. But hey, I'm having fun. And that's what counts. Ah, did you enjoy that couple seconds of chili slinging? I know I did, but you can see I'm making another indent. Why? It's tomato time. So I got one can of petite diced tomatoes. Do not drain them. Just go ahead and pour it in there like that. And then I'm gonna take my spatulas and work it in there. I want all that nice tomato juice to just kind of permeate throughout the whole chili mixture. Was that the right word? According to Google, close enough. So it's that time again. If you're wondering what time I'm talking about, you've probably been skipping through the video, in which case I caught you, but I greatly appreciate you watching anyway. So I'm gonna come in with a can of dark red kidney beans that I have rinsed, drained and rinsed these things. I'm gonna pour them there in the center. And then I'm just gonna take my two little spatulas here and work it in like we did the tomatoes and everything else. This key right now is just kind of mixing it to where your chili looks like chili. So yeah. I could fall asleep to that sound, no joke. So if you paid attention to the ingredients part of the video, which is like 10 seconds in, so you probably saw it. We are down to the white kidney beans or the cannellini beans. Just gonna pour them in there, also drained and rinsed. And then I'm also gonna take my spatulas and just work it in together. So this right here, I picked these cause I like them. They give a little different look to it. I really, don't guess I've ever did a taste test between them and the dark red kidney beans, but hey, I think they work. What beans do you put in your chili? Drop me a comment. So if you're thinking, man, he forgot that liquid he made earlier, you were almost right, but I remembered it. Same process here. I'm just going to pour a little bit of thyme in there in the center and mix it in pretty good. And I'm going to let that simmer and reduce down. I'm not going for the soupy type chili texture yet. I'm just trying to cook it in there so it don't burn. We want it to mix, simmer, the flavors all come together. Like I said, we're not doing that in the pot. Normally everybody gets to know each other in the pot. And if you were thinking of the office right now, I guarantee you, me and you could be friends. But this right here, we can always add that little broth later when we get to the end of it. So right now, just take your time, be patient, and just let it come together. So I was patient and come together, scooped it in there with some spatulas. I like mine thicker, so I didn't put too much of that liquid in there. It's right here is personal preference, but let's go give it a try, see what we think. All right, so we made it back to the taste test table and we got some chili beans on the griddle. So first things first. Pre-gaming in your 30s is quite a bit different from pre-gaming in your 20s. But I'm gonna be smart because I know my body. Just a little palate cleanser there. 
very light. But I think it looks like chili. I'm very happy with how it turned out, the looks wise. And I got me a little sour cream and Fiesta blend cheese. And some chives just for some presentation. Let's give it a try. Mmm. Mmm. I'd like to give this to someone, not tell them it's on a griddle, just see if they can tell the difference. Um, I think it tastes pretty much like chili beans I made in a slow cooker. Um, had some good chili beans, you know, throughout the years, pressure cooked different ways. This right here is a fun cook, and I love how it tasted and turned out. Now, next question. Crackers. Who adds crackers to their chili, and who doesn't? Drop me a comment. Some people think they are necessary. Some people think they are not. I like them in there. Don't have to have them 100%, but if I got them on hand, they're going in. So let's give it a little stir. Cheese. This is a messy cook, uh, but a fun cook. I did not necessarily go out of my way to be clean about it either as far as not trying to sling it around as is part of the fun. Uh, clean up my mess uh, or my wife would make me shut down the channel. Let's give it a try with the crackers. Mm. You know, with or without, I think it tastes great. I'm really pleased with how it turned out. And uh, I recommend the eighth of a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. This right here is some different chili bean recipes I've seen throughout the years. I added a little bit to make it more suited to my taste. I'll put the recipe uh, in the description of this video. I think the eighth of a teaspoon of cayenne really gives it that nice chili flavor. A lot of recipes can call for like a fourth of a teaspoon. Uh, depends on how hot you like it. Uh, admit it if you don't like it too hot. I just think it really brings out the chili flavor to it. And I am proud of how this turned out. And I appreciate all of you all taking the time to watch this video. If you saw something you liked, I hope you'll please consider to like, comment, subscribe, share, and turn on post notifications so you know when new content is added to the channel. As always, this is Garrett Griddler saying, till next time, let's keep cooking. Hey, you want a better idea how much that chili pepper is going to cost you at the grocery store? Here's a pretty good tip. Just give it away, give it away, give it away now. That's because they usually charge by the pound.